This is the ultimate LS Swap S10 how-to video. Wide open throttle and I can't even pull this hill. Are you tired of struggling to climb hills in your S10? Are you tired of getting beat by slow stock Mustangs? Or getting beat up on by V8 S10s at the racetrack? Or getting jealous of your friends when you see them doing rowdy burnouts on security cameras? Well, that's all about to change because this is the ultimate S10 LS Swap video guide. In this video, you'll find all the parts necessary to do your own LS Swap and be able to cut nasty burnouts going down the road you might even be able to gap a Hellcat or two. There's a whole lot in this video, so strap in and let's go. We are combining five years of experience with this. A friend of mine, he has seven years experience. Another friend of mine, he has six years. We're combining all this into one video for me to help you guys do an LS swap on your S10, your Sonoma, your Blazer, your Jimmy. We're gonna get you guys in a V8 S10 running and driving. I don't care about AC and I don't care about gauges. If that's gonna turn you off, I'm sorry, but this is just to get the S10 running and driving under the power of an LS. Let's get into it. All my sources and all the parts that I find will be linked in the description. If you have any suggestions, drop them in the comments below and I'll read through them and pin the ones that are the most helpful and reply to them. That way you guys watching can go down in the comments. If I somehow missed something, it'll be in the comments. All right, so the first thing that you need to do before you even put your engine in the truck is you need to prep your truck for said engine. Now the best way to do this is underneath of the cab, under the firewall, there are a bunch of little, I don't know what to call them other than heat shields. They're silver, take them out of the way. You don't need them, I mean, if you wanna put tape under your carpet, that's fine. Take them out of the way, they're gonna cause you headaches. Get those removed and then the pinch weld right there below the firewall where it meets the transmission tunnel, go ahead and cut it or bend it out of the way. Get that bent, make it flush. Any protrusions in the cab that you see might think will cause issues with clearance, take a hammer, knock the crap out of them, bend it up out of the way. That way you're not fighting your transmission or your engine into the truck. It makes life so much easier. Once you have that clearance, it's time to talk about your first part that you'll need for the swap. It's your oil pan. If you run a stock truck oil pan, it's going to hang down about two inches below the bottom of the frame. Now, if you run a stock oil pan, you'll have to notch your frame. You'll have to go in, cut a section out, box it in, and weld in a piece that goes back across as far forward as you can get it. That way you can have all the clearance. If you don't wanna do any of that, and you want to spend a little money and not have to do any fabrication like me, and like everybody else that I've talked to, you can get the GM muscle car oil pan. It's a very nice piece and it saves so much headache with having to cut, weld, and all that. It's a little pricey, yes. About $280 is what I've found for a good one. You can get them on eBay for a little cheaper. We also have the Hummer H3 oil pan that will also work. Many people ask, what the difference between a stock oil pan and a GM muscle car oil pan is. And the main difference is obviously the way it sits right here. I have the oil pans, I will compare them. And also the pickup tube. As you can see here, I've got them as about as, about as good as I can get them. That is the main difference. You can see the obvious shallowness of the muscle car oil pan compared to a stock 6.0 truck. And here you can see the difference between the GM muscle car oil pan, which is this one that I'm holding, and a stock truck. Those are your main differences. Now, once you have your oil pan situation figured out, whichever way that you go does not affect this next step. You have to decide your engine mounts. Now, the best engine mounts that I've heard, I have talked to many different people about this, and that is the 2.8 poly mounts. You can get them from Current Performance or you can get them off of eBay. The best ones, the ones that I use, are the ones off of Current Performance. They are 
very nice quality. They allow for a little bit of wiggle room. You can shift the engine one way or another, forward or backwards. There's just a little bit of play that you can do there. Now your transmission cross member is another big part in this. The best thing to do is get your transmission in, get the engine in, put it on, on wood or a jack, and just see how your stock one fits. Current Performance sells a G-Force cross member. It's a very nice part, and it's a little expensive and heavy, but try your stock cross member. If you're gonna run long tubes, just do what I did and go in there and cut a big section out, make an arch, box it in. A stock cross member is still in this truck today, and it's had a 4L60 and now has a 400 turbo in it, and I've got long tubes, and I have absolutely zero issue with a stock cross member. Next comes one of the possibly more expensive things that you can possibly buy for an LS swap. That's the headers. You have three different options. Number one, you can go with a shorty header. You can get them on eBay for $150. They're relatively inexpensive. The only bad part about them is they're a little smaller. Inch and five eighths is the one that I had on this truck. And it did perfect, had no issue with it. Item number two is your mid-length headers. Holly has a good selection of LS swap parts on their website. A little expensive, yes, but excellent quality. And the mid-length headers are a fantastic choice. If you want to upgrade from a shorty, but you don't want to spend the money of a long tube, they have two different options, inch and three quarter and inch and seven eighths. Both of them are fantastic. Next option is long tubes. Now this is where things get a little more expensive. The best ones that I found are obviously the Stainless Works and they're like $1,500. So while editing this video, I found a number on mine and it is a 45906. These are Hedman Hustler long tubes. I looked them up. They're about $1,000 brand new. If you have any issues with your headers, all you have to do is take a small hammer and ping it, clearance it. It's not going to affect the performance of anything. It will just help you get around a couple things if you have any issues with clearance. The benefits of shorties and mid lengths. Once you get them, you don't have to notch one side of your cross member. You can bring the exhaust down, loop it over, and send it back, or wire it together and send it back. Long tubes is a different story. It comes down and they go back, and they don't, you can't, there's nothing you can do because by the time they go back, the transmission pan or whatever type of transmission you're running is right there. So you have no choice but to keep going back and then bring it together. If you're still deciding on your transmission, just know that a 99 and 2000 six liter or one of the early engines like that has a spacer. The only way you'll know is when you get your transmission and your engine coupled together and your converter hub is like that far away from the crank. You'll have to get a, a crank spacer. They're relatively cheap on Jags or Summit. Any transmission that came with a General Motors engine will work in this swap. If you're running a 4L60 and you have a 4L60 truck, the stock transmission, the stock cable will work. There hardly will be any modifications that you'll have to make. Moving on to part two, you have your steering shaft. Now the steering shaft is a little different. It all depends on your engine mounts and your header choice. I have long tubes with current performance mounts and I'm running a stock steering shaft. You can also use a Jeep Cherokee, not a Grand Cherokee, just a Jeep Cherokee steering shaft. And it is a direct fit on these trucks. Holly also offers a steering shaft, but they're a little expensive. Next up, you have the power steering. You can go two different ways with this. You can go ICT billet or something like that, or you can go stock truck accessory. You won't be able to run your stock truck accessory with an aftermarket fuel rail like the one I have here. You'll have to get an ICT billet or LS simple bracket. Now for the power steering hoses, it's a little straightforward and kind of honestly rednecked. The pressure hose is a stock 1500 Silverado and for the return hose, I simply have a metal line coming from the gearbox, cut, bent, a rubber hose looping around, and then another metal line going from the power steering pump, bent, cut, coming forward, and it just makes a little loop. There's an adjuster screw on the power steering gearbox. 
that's kind of in the way. And you can either notch it with a grinder, get a smaller pulley, or maybe loosen your motor mounts up and kind of shimmy your engine one way or the other and then tighten it down. But it's it's super, super close. But a stock 4.3 throttle cable will work perfect on an LS swap. I had no modifications to my throttle pedal. I had no modifications to my cable. It was literal direct fit. Now that's with a stock truck intake. Now when you do this though, if you're running a new, new body style or a Trailblazer Super Sport intake, Glenn's Auto Performance sells these brackets because on the TDSS intake, it's a little different, the mounting for the throttle cable, you'll have to get this little throttle cable bracket and it, it works perfect, it's a direct fit and it saves you so much headache. Moving on to part three, and possibly the most important part and parts of this entire process, and that's your wiring harness. Now, before you decide on your harness, you need to decide what you're gonna do with the truck. Now, in the very beginning with this truck, I wanted it to be a daily driver. So I had somebody modify a stock Silverado computer and harness to work with being a standalone system with a 4060 transmission. You can send off a stock harness and have somebody modify it to work. The gauges, I, this truck was completely different. I am no help with gauges. If that's gonna ruin this video for you, I'm sorry. Oh well, you can have a Silverado harness modified or you have two options for direct plug and play harnesses. BP Automotive sells one and Current Performance sells one. Yes, they're expensive, but they are awesome. The gauges, uh, you can get like a digital display screen that's OBD2 powered like I used to have. That's honestly the best option. On the newer trucks, 98 and up, everything is different. Hell, 97 and up is a little different. These harnesses will allow you to be direct plug, play, everything work. You'll have to talk to them and they'll guide you through it. Everything will be labeled. They're super, super nice quality and I wish I was sponsored by them, but I'm not. Your next option for wiring harness. If you're gonna do what we have here, which is a street strip toy, I have a Holly Terminator, and it is one of the best upgrades that I have ever done to this truck. The Terminator allows you to do all your tuning on your own. It's a standalone system. All it controls is your engine. Or if you get the X-Max, it can control your transmission as well. You can get a small three and a half inch screen, or you can get the big seven inch screen. Reversion Raceworks offers a dash piece that mounts the computer screen. Wiring harness is one of the most important parts of this entire process. A new harness especially. I had ghost after ghost after ghost with the stock truck harness because if the wires are old, the computers are old. You get a BP Automotive or Current Performance or a Terminator, it's all new. Moving on to the next part, part four, we're talking about the cooling system. Now the cooling system may be a little misleading because you think you're upgrading your engine size and you'll need to upgrade your cooling system. When in all reality, it's not really the truth. I have went from a daily driven 5.3 with a cam, big cam 5.3, 5.3 on nitrous, six liter with a big cam, six liter with an even bigger cam and nitrous, and I have not had one single issue with cooling. The engine runs at 185 degrees and it has a stock 4.3, not 4.3 HD, 4.3 S10 radiator. The thing is, you need to run Dodge Intrepid dual electric fans. They are the cheapest. You can go to a junkyard and pick them up. They fit perfect in an S10 radiator. Now before you install your radiator in your fans, it is 100% best to remove your core support and take a junk radiator. If you can get your hands on a junk radiator, perfect. But if not, take your, take your radiator and put it on your core support and cut and cut and cut until you can put the radiator into the core support. Once you do that, install your core support, install the radiator, put the fans in and make you some mounting brackets that holds the fans into the radiator. These fans are pullers. They pull air from the front back. There's two fans and they work perfect. I have them on a switch through the Terminator. It has an output for them. Works absolutely awesome. Now the radiator hoses will depend on how you do your cold air intake. 
if you do your color intake like this, then the best thing to do is cut the water neck off of your water pump about two inches above or right before it starts to curve and then take some radiator hoses and splice them together and make your own. Now for the bottom radiator hose, if you're running stock truck accessories, like a stock truck water pump, then it, it's easy. Just use a stock truck lower radiator hose. There are other radiators out there that you can get that are bigger, they are better, and they'll cool better. But from my experience and from other people that I have talked to, from their experience, 4.3 is the cheapest, easiest radiator to go with because if you're using a 4.3 truck, you've already got one. The little steam vent that comes off between the two heads, on a stock Silverado, it goes into a port on the radiator. Well, on an S10 radiator, you don't have that port. So you have two options. Drill and tap into your water pump and put a little barb fitting there, which is what I did. Works perfect, gets it out of the way. Or you can put it into either a heater hose or a radiator hose. Now your heater core, you can get one of these little C's. If you don't want to run heat, a little bypass hose from like Amazon for five or six dollars. Does away with the need for heater hoses and cleans the engine bay up a whole lot. Moving on to part five, that is the fuel. And it is a very important one because how are you gonna run your engine without fuel, right? Your fuel pump, surprisingly, a 96 and up 2.2 liter fuel pump will work. 4.3, I'd upgrade to a 2.2 fuel pump or a Walbro 255 or 455 fuel pump. You don't have to have a fuel cell. You can use your factory fuel tank. Pop one of these new pumps in it, a Walbro 255 or something that supports 58 PSI of fuel pressure. That is what these engines run at, 58 PSI. Once you have your fuel pump selected, whichever one that you decide, stock 2.2 or a Walbro or a Holly or an inline pump or whatever, you need to decide your fuel regulator. And the best way to decide your fuel regulator is what intake you're gonna run. On a Gen 3 1500 Silverado engine, which is like a 01, 02, 2000, those intakes have return style fuel rails, which means they have a regulator built into them. Now for the fuel rail, you'll need these two adapters. One's a 3 8 and one's a 5 16 You can use AN fittings to plumb them from your tank all the way forward to from the pump. The Gen 4 trucks, which is like 2007, I believe, and up, and the Trailblazer intake, is a returnless style fuel rail, which means that you'll need your own fuel regulator. You can get a C5 Corvette fuel regulator. Glenn's Auto Performance sells them with all the available fittings that you'll need, or you can get an aftermarket one like an Aeromotive or something like that, as long as it's capable of 58 PSI fuel pressure. So the final part, you have your engine in, it runs, you have your transmission in and all that, and everything is ready to go. You just need a drive line and a rear end. Well, a common, common misconception with doing these swaps is that people think that once you put a V8 in, your rear end is gonna explode as soon as you put it in drive. That's not true. The stock rear end in this truck held up for a couple years. The rear end will last as a daily driver. I was running 1140s in the quarter mile with this truck on 150 shot of nitrous on the stock rear end and had no issues with it. If you're daily driving your truck, a stock rear end will do fine. It might one wheel peel, but as long as you keep it from wheel hopping, you'll be fine. If you put traction bars on like cow tracks or slacker bars or whatever, if you put those bars on there, then that eliminates the wheel hop issue, or at least it controls it a little better. Now the drive shaft is about the same way. You can use the stock drive shaft. You may have to get it shortened because it might be too long to fit between the transmission and the rear end. If that's the case, it's no big deal. Go to a local machine shop. They will either do it for you or they will give you somebody's number that will be able to do it. So now that we have our cab clearance for the transmission, we have our oil pans, we have our headers, we have our engine mounts, transmission mount, we have our wiring harness, the fuel pump, regulator, all this stuff. Sounds to me like it's time for you to go make a rip. These trucks are so freaking fun when you get a V8 under them. If you don't agree with anything 
that I said in this video or if I missed something, which I'm pretty sure I did not, go ahead and leave a comment. Like I said, I will include all my sources and all the parts that I have found in the description below. Check it out, read through it. Maybe there's some things in there, if you wanna read, there will be things in there that will help you out. But thank you guys for watching. Make sure to drop a like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see. Thank you.